Hi there, Liz here. I'm extremely lucky to be part of the DT for Lisa, Crafting with Lisa Horton and have been from the beginning and I must say her range of products are absolutely fantastic and everything she brings out goes so well with the la latest things that she's brought out. One of the latest things she has brought out is some beautiful stamp sets. There's three in all, um, that, well there could be more actually, um, but I'm going to focus today on this particular stamp set which is called Trellis Blooms and the ones that I'm focusing on this today is this flower and this one which are these two. I think they look quite daisy like actually and this is one of the finished projects I have with it using it quite simple really but I thought today I'd show you two ways of hopefully uh, you could use them for a, a different look of course there's absolutely plenty more um, but for today I thought I'd concentrate on those two so first of all stamp them out of course I've used a VersaFine today if I was using Copics to colour it I would use a, a Memento or something that can take the alcohol inks but today just for show I'm going to be using distress inks and I find that the VersaFine takes it quite well so just to show you that's how they both look stamped out I'm not going to, to bore you with me cutting out because basically you know I've cut out and this is some that I've cut out earlier now I must admit I am extremely lucky to have a scan and cut and these have been cut with the scan and cut. However they are fairly easy as you can see. Not much, no hardship in cutting them out so to be honest you could do that quite easy. Right, as you can see I've already coloured some just to save time and I've in the two colourways and I've left some uncoloured just a quick show. Right, let's start off with this one. So, taking some tattered straw. This time I'm using a foam pad, but sometimes I use brushes as well, which, to be honest, I find both just, eat, just as nice. But to be honest, the brushes I use do tend to give a bit of a lighter colour. So, just going down with a bit of colour, nothing elaborate, nothing nothing hard and do that on both sides. If you're going in circular motions just make sure that you hold it down well so that the petal doesn't tend to want to break off. So there we go. Now on the, on the lemon ones I did then go back with the, that was scattered straw and I went back with wild honey just on the tips nothing again nothing fancy you can of course be fancy if you want entirely up to you you don't have to colour them the same way I have you can do them a lot different on the other sample that I showed you before I actually coloured just the darker in the middle so again gives a different look to be honest to the flowers anyway I'm not bothering colouring the centre on the back it doesn't matter right so just get this quick wipe up and then we're not messing the others and then also that's how I coloured the purple one which this time I did in Seedless Preserves. This is a much more stronger colour and I think my pad's a bit wetter, a bit newer as well so that goes on quite easy and shows quite well. So just a flicking motion will colour this one. 
no problem. Right, so we've got that done and now it's how I've actually shaped them that I thought I'd show you today. Again, there's all different ways to do this as well, but this is what the way that I did it for these and find quite easy. So you need some sort of foam mat. You can actually use a washing up liquid pad cut down, but if you have something like this, that might just be a bit easier. It doesn't tend to jump about as much. But anyway, that's... So I thought I'd show you with this one first. Now then, doing it the way I do it, take a water bottle and spray. This is onto 300 GSM card and wait till they start lifting off the glass mat like that. Then when they've started doing that, you need to take a ball tool and for the actual shaping quite a smallish end so then turn that over and on the end of the petal go round and as you can see they've started curling up Let's press moderately firmly and do be aware that if you use a, a less solid um, cardstock that they can tear but you know just to so just take your time basically and then flip it over and using a slightly bigger ball end go round the center like so and then set aside to dry and that's as simple as it is so do another one now this one's been soaking a little bit longer so you might want to tear as as that as just done there so basically just very gentle with it and try to put it back in <laughs> put it back in its place <laughs> like I said just go now this is where this mat if you've got something similar to this is easier because I do find that if you use a a mat for washing up a washing up liquid mat because it's slightly denser um the, pe the, the flowers tend to jump about a bit when you're doing it but I mean it's just a case of holding it a bit firmer in your hand but so again that's another one and again set it to side now then, the little tiny one, so cute. This one doesn't take quite as much because of course it's not as big. So I tend to just go down the middle on these. And then turn it over, slightly flatten them out. That one doesn't look quite enough. Flatten it out. Just squidge in the middle with that one. That's just enough. And there's your little pretty flower. So they're the very, very basic ones. Like I said, just leave them aside now to dry. And that was the ones that basically look like that. So all I've done when they've dried is put some little, the uh, pearls, AB pearls in from, I think that was from the first set. Absolutely gorgeous. I love that silvery colour. Really, really pretty. I need some more of those, Lisa. <laughs> right, now then, I'm going to show you now another way of using them. So, this time turn them over and we need three for this one. So again, you swish these round on the where the mat's wet, 
you can probably just pick up enough ink but if not you can give the front a light spray as well I have I have done this method even with the Copic um, coloured ones and they're just as good they're just they're absolutely fine they work out just as good right so basically the same step you want this one to really curl in as in like that So oh, there's nothing difficult about it. A little bit fiddly sometimes, especially when you get into the end two. Just take your time and enjoy it. Have fun with it. Right, so give it a bit of thing with your hands. Now then take the same bolt tool and this time push down on the same side. Oops, where's that going? And then basically just for a few seconds, they will separate a little bit more, but just for a few seconds, hold it together and again set it to the side. Now, then, there is that's the way that you get with the pattern of the stamp on the outside. So, to do that again. Do it on the back because that's the bit that's going to show when it's curled up. I will show you when I've done them this way how you can also get it to look different by having the pattern on the inside. It looks exactly, you do exactly the same steps. It's just a case of which you like the look of or you want for that particular time. I've done them both ways. But it just means you get yet more versatility from your stamps. Now this time I'm not bothered about it being quite as curled together. Because for these you layer it up. So I'm quite happy with, as you can see, that one's slightly tighter. That one's not quite so much. And then this one. Now this one again I'm going to have to be careful because it's got quite wet does of course mean sometimes that they actually fold in a bit easier sometimes it doesn't work like that but anyway we can see what happens and to remember I've not managed to do a video for quite a while now because I got a puppy and she's going on for seven months now so I'm actually getting a bit of time when I can devote to videos again, but there was no way I could earlier. Right, and then there's another one. So those three, I'll just leave on the side now to just dry off a little bit. Otherwise, if I try and start t taking them apart and doing stuff with them, they'll probably tear and fall to bits, which we don't really want that, do we? Right, so on this one... I'm going to show you what it looks like if we just do it the original first way no matter which way you spray it to be honest let's try and hurry it up for the sake of the video to be, for a bit to be honest um, and we can show you I've just thought well while they're drying a little bit I'll show you um, the first way with the purple just to show you what it looks like in the lemon I think they make a lovely daisy looking flower these to be honest this one's curling up quite well because I've put quite a bit of water on but it doesn't really matter just be careful when you get into that bit again just turn it over not as easy because it's wet it's a bit wetter so just be careful with it and again go around the center so that's your lemon one quite 
daisy looking I think, quite nice. And that was the purple one. Depending on what you want to do with them, of course. Right, now I'm going to do the same steps with for the curled up ones because it's easy enough to see like I said what the little ones look like that are just thingy so I'll I should have coloured this one earlier but anyway never mind I'll show you again it's really easy put some ink on doesn't have to be precise unless you want it to be as I've said before it's really up to you the whole point of this is to enjoy it isn't that so no point going getting yourself worked up if you don't have to do I should like work, being worked up of course now on this I only put a dab in the centre basically because I think that ink pad's a bit big to be trying to put it on the, <laughs> the other way right so again now there are, like I said, there are two or three ways you can do that. Well, a couple of ways you can do this. You can have it so that the the petal stamp petal bit is on the outside, or you can have it that it's on the inside. But I'll because I've done that that way, I'll do this the, the same way. And I have another one here that I haven't coloured, but I can show it you the other way as well. Right, put these on the the mat. Now again, these are only little narrow-ish petals. So, you don't need to go too heavy-handed and you don't need to go around the outsides quite the same. So, shape it with your fingers as much as you can so that it brings it together love these I think they look like little babies <laughs> yeah that's probably just me hey ho so you can each one can look different by the way that you style them by the color that you use uh, whether it's the even the color in medium like I said that you use can make them look different now then I'm going to say I've got a slightly smaller yes I have got a very a slightly smaller ball tool I'm just going to see if I can get it to curl up slightly more yeah so alter the size of your ball tools, find out what works best as well if you if you've got them. I think I, I'm lucky to have a couple of ranges and they are quite they are a bit different sizes to be honest, so it comes in handy. So as you can see that one's gone quite close together, which is really good actually. Now then you can now's the time to glue them together and I do find sometimes I've used a hot glue, but I haven't got it. I haven't got it plugged in um, at the moment. So I'm going to just use some of the cosmic shimmer and make sure that that's dry underneath. I don't want it anymore. Getting damp. So take your smallest one that you've got. These should really really have time to dry a little bit more but hey ho right this is the fun bit take some tweezers mm. not those ones and just holding it with one on one of the petals put some 
glue and take your other one and just hold it in place and basically shove it in the centre. Then we're going to do the same thing. Slightly, maybe slightly, just having to open it just, just ever so slightly to push it in. There we go. And again. So close it into shape. Right, I usually put those three together and then put the bigger ones together. Right, so we have your three. And I tend to look which is the closest. Right, so I think we will go that this is the bud. It could have been slightly more together, um, but because I've got the other, if, if you just wanted to use the big ones, you could have held this closer together. But because I want the others going inside this, it's plenty small enough. So again, just close that down like that, and then. Just slightly open these ones with your fingers ever so slightly. Get hold of your petals again, some glue. And pop it in. If you need to move it because it's not quite in the right place, you, of course you can do, there's no problem with that. And then, so that's, that would be a look on its own to be honest, you don't need to put the smaller one in it. I think that's quite nice as it is. But, I'm going to put the smaller one in because, well, that's what I said I'd show you. So, again, take your small one. Glue on the bottom. Spread it out a little bit. There we go. And then that's with the inner ones as well. So mine's slightly damp, so they're not quite as close together as what you could have them. Um, basically, because they haven't they haven't dried to the shape that they would have been had they been allowed to dry. But you're getting the idea. The principle is exactly the same. It's just that you'd allow them to dry a little bit longer. Um, I think. Well, yeah, I could show you. I could show you this one with just another way, just because I've I've actually got these two um, coloured. So I'll just show you this one, very similar to the first flower. I'll actually do it so it's got the other. Um, no, not that one. Sorry, this. Yeah. Yes, I'll do it the same, same way as I did the first ones I showed you. We turn it over. I will tell you too, while I'm thinking on, that depending on what you use, can also alter the look of the flowers for the finished look. I'm going to do another video of one of the flowers for you soon and that one I'm going to show you on a couple of different types of card 
and they, they, they do, they look different, really different. Right, so there we go. I'm just going to, like I said, these should be dry. So don't do it as quick as I have. Try to alter the petals as much as you can. Not helping because it's not dry. Just give a little push in the middle and another look for exactly the same way of doing it. And then I'll just show you what I've how I finished this, these up. Get the trusty, um, put some glue, get Lisa's fabulous pickup tool, mine are not the end of mine but I just shaped it back again, so, and I, I borrowed um, Natasha's fabulous idea of, because I'd knocked the top off, um, finding a top that fit it, <laughs> so now don't need to worry about doing things like that again so thank you Natasha for your fabulous idea and there we go really nice I think so there's your flowers I'm sure you um, for this one all I did was put some glue in the centre and added my pearls are always upside down and I have to tweak them <laughs> there we go when the glue dries it dries clear so you won't see that so don't worry about that and then there's which basically, like I've said before, is what they look like when they're dried. And then for these, I just cut out some leaves and just coloured them again with Distress Inks. Added some of Lisa's fabulous sisal that she has. And then this is one of the butterflies that, again, was on Lisa's show, um, along with these flowers. And then this is one of the uh, grey board tags that I have. And I've just basically put some acrylic paints and stuff on the back and then used the gorgeous wood grain stamp with some um, clear embossing ink that uh, powder that Lisa sells just to give it that lovely effect. Really like that. Right, and I think that's it. So do hope you have a go at that. Let me know if you do. Show me. Be very happy to, play, to see them. And of course with these, some of the other pearls in... Um, Lisa's set you could put those in the daisy type yellow ones or whatever color you choose right that's it for now bye